Hi everybody! Today we are hanging out with Born to Shake from Kelowna. Just see if they're coming in here. I think I can invite them. Born to Shake, join, wave! Hey guys! Get them in here. Be request. Go live with Born to Shake. Cocktail Masters! Are they in? Waiting for them? Hey! Hi! Hi. <laughs> this is oh, yeah, Born to Shake. Good. Everybody's watching from my channel, and they are the cocktail masters of Kelowna. The Ooh. entire Okanagan, I would say. Like, probably BC. What an introduction. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Tell you, you say what you guys do, because I'm just going to say, like, you guys make cocktails, and that's probably not adequately describing what you guys do. I mean, that really balances it out. Yeah. It, it, you know, we take what we do and then we make cocktails with it, I guess is one way of doing it. <laughs> um, yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Shane. This is Nicole. Um, yeah. So for Born to Shake, we, I mean, we make uh, cocktail products. We make really awesome uh, cocktail syrups, <laughs> something like this that we're going to be using today. Yeah. Allison's got one over there. Uh, that's our uh, lavender syrup. It's a really beautiful um floral but also gorgeous like bluey purpley hue uh, we make uh, our own bitters as well which is something that you pulled up um i've got a lemon one over here i believe you've got the herbal lavender i do herbal lavender so these are the bitters and these are the syrups right yeah yeah and then uh yeah so part of the fun is we really try to give you guys the tools to uh, be your own mixologist at home. Um, so we want you to have the tools to be successful. Uh, so what we do is we put up uh, fun recipes, we combine our syrups with our bitters, um, some of our other products, and then um, give you the recipes uh, to kind of have your own fun at home. And then we encourage you to, um, you know, tweak your cocktails as you see fit. Um, you know, if you like things a bit sweeter, add a bit more uh, sweet. If you want things a bit more tart, you know, you could add things like citrus, which you're holding up right there, some fresh lemon. And um, yeah, it's like, have the recipe start with it and then kind of roll on your own and have your own fun and um yeah that's kind of born a shake in a nutshell yeah and you guys do like entire because i got the whole cocktail kit before i yeah got this summer from you guys and is that something you guys just did because of covid or you were doing that anyhow kind of i mean we were primarily an events company before covid but like being restricted and not being able to do any events we kind of had a little bit more time to um, launch more products. We had a couple of products. We mainly did um, like an old fashioned kit. Um, and then when COVID happened, we started making like a ton of different products and kind of put them all together to make a bunch of different cocktail kits. So that's primarily what we sold um, when everybody was stuck at home and just needed a good cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah, that's when we launched the cocktail. I kit. probably bought the margarita one, I think, because I yeah. still yeah. like just yeah. That's the viscous salt. salt. <laughs> um, I think I think that like now to date was probably our second hottest kit. I didn't think we were gonna beat it this uh, this early on into the year, but yeah. Um, yeah, that one in our blueberry Moscow mule. You know, we oh, we really try to take um, easy to execute cocktails and then put yeah. a fun little riff um, and our own um, flair and twist on it, and then um, again just kind of give you the the fun tools to make your own fun at home. Because you guys make all of these yourself, right? Yeah, totally. Like all the like bitters and syrups and salts and everything you make by yourself. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's uh, it's a labor of love, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to see how many different types of botanicals and roots and herbs and weird spices you end up putting into something just to kind of get at the right level of bitterness. And I mean, I kind of nerd out and um, like have it dialed down to even the amount of days too. So. It's, well, it's uh, a lot like cooking too. Like you're mixing herbs and spices to make it just a little bit extra here, a little bit extra there. So you're basically doing the same thing when you exactly like you're starting it when you create your bitters, and then when you make the cocktail, you're just adding even more like flavors and spices. So it is is a lot yeah. of cooking, I think. It, it's a hundred percent like cooking. I mean, that's really what I mean. Got myself into this realm was uh, I. I mean, wouldn't consider myself a chef by any means, but I, I know my way around the kitchen and uh, just really like experimenting with flavors and having fun. And um, the key differentiating factor for me between um, like my enjoyment with cooking versus uh, lack of enjoyment from baking is that uh, baking is just like so precise and there's no for there's no forgiveness there. And you also have to wait to see the fruits of your labor with cooking. You know, you add some spices and you can instantly taste it and you see what's yeah. happening. 
And so the same kind of fun happens with cocktailing where you get to try your cocktail right away. And you, like when we do our cocktail classes, um, we kind of take you through step by step and how each um, element uh, is a variable and how it changes it. So kind of like everything that you pointed out in your screen there, right? You've got your citrus, you've got your sweet, you've got your- um, My honey gin. syrup per Nicole's instructions. Right, exactly. <laughs> And uh, each one of those things is a variable and, you know, every variable is going to change your flavor profile of your cocktail. And so it's going to have a, it's going to have an impact. One of the most fun things that we like to do is showcase how um, bitters are uh, used in such small and finite amounts and quantities and how it has such a, a profound uh, change or impact on the cocktail. So um, these are usually just like one drop or two drops you add, right? You don't add like you don't pour it, you add a drop or two. <laughs> yeah, it, we, so to make things like super simple for everybody, we quantify a dash as 10 drops. So we put everything into a fun dropper bottle, but um, which is what you've got. There's a couple different ways that um, bitters are put into bottles though. This is a dasher bottle. Um, so it's just kind of oh. tiny, like a Tabasco bottle. Like Tabasco, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you, one dash would just be like one, two, that would be two dashes. So um, this is not the best way to, um, put bitters in a cocktail because like Tabasco, when the bottle's really empty, a ton of Tabasco will come out. If the bottle's really full, not a lot comes out. So yeah. it's just, it's not, it's not the best way to do it. Um, so nowadays, well, and Shane and I think that the best way to do it is with a dropper bottle because uh, one dash is 10 drops. So you can't, you can't, you can't mess that up. Yeah. This is, this is going to be a lot more um, consistent every single time. Yeah. A lot more yeah. controlled. And I was so thinking too, because you don't use so much for your, cocktails that I was going to start trying to incorporate bitters into some of my cooking. Totally. Yeah, a lot of people do that. It's a really fun way to, to add essence of um, something like the herbal yeah. lavender out there. Uh, we do orange, lavender, and rosemary. It's kind of like a fun little trilogy. And so it's a nice way to kind of add the aroma or the essence of orange in there with a little bit of bitterness without having to, you know, get an orange, yeah. you know, grind it. It's, uh, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. So it's fun. Cooking and baking has been fun for that. Yay. And we were talking earlier that you're going to be like starting the whole cocktail movement there in the Okanagan because it's very kind of craft beer and wine focused still in the wine country there, but we're going to get cocktails moving. Yeah. I mean, when uh, we started this about a year and a half ago now, about a year ago, um, again, as Nicole mentioned, you know, we were very um, heavy focused on events. And one of the things that we noticed was that, um, you know, when you go to a wedding, um, there's, there's a lot of highball service. There's a lot of drinks there, but there aren't a lot of cocktails. And I think that that's a huge opportunity, uh, especially in the Okanagan. Um, there's definitely some competitors, uh, for sure. We weren't the first to get into the game here, but um, the, kind of the, the approach that we have with um, giving everybody, you know, like, we want, we want to encourage everybody to have their own fun and to get creative. You know, so yeah. aside from the boozy pouches that we had sent you as well. Um, aside those from are that, fun. Those, they're really fun. <laughs> but that was, we, we, we had to get our arms actually really twisted to do those because uh, we, it's just a ready to drink cocktail. So yeah. we haven't, um, like, you really just have to add ice in your own spirit to that. And that kind of goes against everything that we've been talking about with, you know, you being your own mixologist. Mm -hmm. So the, the approach that we have found uh, that kind of is um, resonating well with uh, Okanagans here is having your own fun and, you know, really trying to like, entertain your guests and entertain uh, at home. And, you know, you want to be able to make some drinks and have some fun. So yeah, um, it's, I, it's been it's been cool. I also think that people just really like those because Kelowna is like the place to go boating and oh the pouches yeah the pouches yeah. were just a hot summer thing that everybody we may or may not have taken them out on the boat a few times this summer. Yeah, <laughs> they, they should always just call them the boat pouches. Yeah. Well, they were just they were so easy to just grab and go, and then they were just magically in our room when we arrived. And the girls that my daughters and I who are of legal age um, were just <laughs> like. We went through those so fast. They were so delicious, but, and just so easy to grab. So sometimes you do want to sit here and you want to mix and you want to go. And other times you're headed on to the boat or just out in the, in the, uh, we were right on the lake in a little villa down at Manteo there for, cause there was like, there's eight of us in the family. So we needed a big place. So we just sit there on the lawn right at the lake there and sip our little pouches and yeah. Well, when That's you're on fun. vacation, you don't really necessarily want to be cooking and making your own cocktails. You want to be like wined and dined and drinking pouches drunk on the beach. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. It was, it was you revert back to college days when you're at the beach. <laughs> yeah. There's no rules. Just as long as they don't see the alcohol. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's funny that so as kind of COVID was like progressing, and we realized that, you know, lockdowns were going to be more um, long lasting than they initially were anticipated. That's kind of when we started to um, come up with a bit of a hybrid idea between um, like, when we first started going from events to absolutely nothing and to product, um, Nicole actually had a really bright idea as to how do we kind of, you know, bridge that gap a little bit and how do we do um, like contactless drop offs where um, they because Airbnbs and, you know, small functions were still happening. And so one of the things that we did was um, we did like a, a bar drop off at your location. So what we would do is we'd come to your Airbnb or to your party or your house, wherever it was, and we would um, come with everything you needed for a bar as if we were going to um, do the event for you. We set up the bar beautifully, had all the ice, had all the ingredients. We would have recipes for you. We had a menu built, everything. And then all we had to do, uh, all, all you had to do is essentially like turn the key and go. So you would kind of jump behind the bar, you had your recipes, you had your cocktail kits and everything. And um, yeah, so that was a, another fun thing that we did to kind of help us progress through COVID. And then eventually it was just full on products. And it's kind of where we're at right now. It's been I was about to say, we, yeah, that's such a good idea. And I wish somebody would also do it with food, but then I guess I should probably yeah. do food. <laughs> but but like, there's a fine line between when you're staying in some place a really short time and I'm on vacation and I don't want to be cooking because we're only there for three days. But once it kind of passes three days, you find yourself eating out three meals a day times like I have four or six kids now with the boyfriends and so eating yeah. out is just really expensive. So it is nice to eat in the room or the Airbnb or whatever. Yeah. But like you said, if the tools aren't there, then it's just so hard to do yeah, it. Yeah. So if you're just dropping off the tools in a box and people can be like, you know what, tonight we're eating in, we can make our own cocktails, we can kind of do our thing and just sit and relax. And that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, a good pivot as people are saying this year. Yeah, yeah. The, the word of 2020. 2020. The word of 2020. <laughs> and I mark my words, it's going to be 2021 too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get it out of your vocabulary yeah, yet. Okay, <laughs> show me how to make a cocktail. Let's yeah, so uh, kind of the, the idea behind this cocktail, uh, as you shared with us, you've kind of been, uh, you've been tincturing a lot with um, your own kombucha over there, which is a beautiful color, by the way. This is <laughs> a... Um, Oh, this is um, cassis. So it's a black currant tea with hibiscus leaves added to it. So it, yeah, it got a really nice color on it. It's still actually fermenting another day or so with the scoby in here, but I'm still gonna use it for my cocktail. Oh, totally. Nice. We're and using um, Mother Love's Holy Hibiscus. So this is a local to Kelowna here. Oh, nice. Kombucha brand, yeah. yeah. They're, um, they make some really fun stuff. They, what is she doing? A new flavor every week, is it? Yeah, she does a flavor of the week and you can fill your prowler with it. Oh, Pretty cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, again, we, you gave us a little hint that you're going to be doing a hibiscus and something, uh, kombucha. So we wanted to kind of mirror that so you would have something as similar as possible to us. Um, so we focus uh, on the hibiscus, uh, holy hibiscus kombucha. And then um, our product that we're using is a honey tea syrup. Um, so what we did was is um, rather than uh, just a simple honey syrup, which is what you were able to make on your end, um, what we do is we take a honey bush tea, which is similar to a rooibos tea, and uh, it's got a lot of body to it. Um, it's gonna have a bit more mouthfeel than a typical rooibos uh, tea. And we use that in place of the water. Um, we have a little bit of a golden organic sugar in there too. So this is gonna be sweet, um, but not like artificial sweet. It's gonna have a yeah. lot of body to it. Um, it works really well with the hibiscus, kind of like tea on tea action there. Um, and then for yourself, um, you just did a one-to-one -one ratio of water to honey. So anybody who obviously doesn't have access to our product at the yeah. moment, um, you can use that. And then we're just- So I think Nicole's instructions on this were just to kind of heat it until it, the water is, so it's 50, like one-to-one -one water honey. Yeah. And then I just heated it. I burned off probably a little bit of the water. So it might have a little bit more honey flavor now than, than watered down, but totally. it's, it's a beautiful basically, syrup now. Yeah, you basically just want it to like, amalgamate the honey and the water together yeah you don't need to, it doesn't yeah. need to simmer for a long time or anything it's just you're basically just trying to melt the honey so that it's easy to get out yeah. otherwise you'd be like scooping honey and making a big mess huge <laughs> and if anybody has ever tried to make a cocktail with honey 
it just doesn't work. It's just, it's too viscous. And then so when you mix it with ice, it just like solidifies yeah. even more. And Unless you you're shaking like, it. It would work a little bit better, but it's yeah. still going to be a mess. So this is just the easy way. Easy. Yeah. So the waters just make it more workable, right? Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then what cool. we're doing, so we're using a, um, oh, and I should also say, we've, we're, we've designed this as a uh, mocktail. So there's no alcohol in this, uh, but really easy to put alcohol in it. Um, for those of you that are still drinking this month and haven't quit, it, quit uh, at the moment. Um, a fun option, which uh, you've got over there. So this is an alt gin. Um, so the brand that we've got is Lumet. Uh, it's a sister company to Sheringham Distilling out on the island. Um, really fun. What they do is they distill a water um, with botanicals. Um, so it's essentially a, a, a gin that doesn't have uh, any alcohol in it. So it's really fun for those of you who um, want to feel like you're drinking or have a little bit of that kind of like floral or botanical note to your cocktail uh, without actually getting the alcohol in there. And you had, you had a, uh, it was AVG or something? Because I've been reading that a lot. And it was? It's uh, no ABV. So no alcohol by volume. And then it's just called an alt gin. You can get like, there's tons of brands that make it now. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just supposed to have like the tasting notes of gin. So that when you're drinking a cocktail like this, you could have, it kind of smells like gin. And it has a little bit of a taste like gin. And then if you're, you know, not drinking or uh, people who are pregnant, my, it's a really nice alternative. Yeah, there's been a there's been a big movement in the last uh, year or two towards these low ABV cocktails, and so you know it's even like a nice way to kind of extend your cocktailing when you're out at the bar if you're the designated driver or if you just want to kind of wind down at the end of the night. Oh, and, good idea. So yeah. how do you ask for that at the bar? Yeah, exactly. just just ask for um, ask them if they have a no ABV gin. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the no ABV or the low ABV cocktails that Shane just mentioned are taking off are really nice um, because sometimes you don't want to just like you go into a, I often watch my friends who are, you know, pregnant and they go into a bar and they're like, what do you have that's not alcoholic? And it's always just like soda water with pineapple juice or like, <laughs> it's like, no one wants that. Nobody wants yeah. to drink that. Even, even kids don't even want that. Like, <laughs> please no more cranberry sodas, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to take a glass. We've got a cold cell glass. You could use a double rocks glass, whatever you want. We're just having fun here. And we're going to fill this with ice. Like fill it? Yeah, all the way to the top. It's going to melt, it's going to melt down again. Okay. Cool. So now what you want to do is there's kind of a, like a, a series of um, product that you would um, go through. Uh, and we'll kind of explain that a little bit uh, and why. So you're gonna grab your jigger if you've got one, or just a shot glass. And what, oh, I forgot, I guess we forgot to go over that. Oh, right, so you got it. Um, so we're gonna go 0.75 of an ounce of your honey syrup. Okay. So if you don't have fancy lines in it like we do, just fill it up to the halfway mark and then. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball yeah, it. Just eyeball it, you'll be good. So we do the, the syrup first, because it's got the most viscosity. And okay. so everything that we flush, um, find it afterwards is going to remove the syrup from the shot glass or the jigger and then you're going to do about half an ounce so just two-thirds of the quantity of your syrup that you would just put in you're going to put that through and again when we talk about um like everybody's palate is going to be different right so um even just when we were making this yesterday i like mine um the way that we're making it right now but i like things a little bit more tart um and nicole liked it with a little bit less lemon so when you try this you know don't be afraid to kind of tweak it the way that you see fit if um, it's too sour just add a little bit more sugar if it's not sour enough then just add a little more lemon yeah or you can always i have this is straight lemon juice i didn't syrup it it's just straight up lemon. that's yep. perfect that's okay. half an ounce of that yeah okay we just did the same thing and then um what you want to do is if you're using your alt gin or you're using a regular gin you want to add kind of depending on how big your glass is or um, how much of a uh, edge you want to take off there. You can kind of go anywhere from an ounce to an ounce and a half to two ounces. Okay. I'm going to make this here. You want to? Yeah, you should do it too. I feel like. You're going to with your <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can smell it. Right? Yeah. All the way from here? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And then what you want to do is um, we're going to take about four ounces of the kombucha. You can either measure it or if you've done it before, I bought. how much to eyeball. I guess they can't really see what we're doing here. 
There you go. We have product. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah exactly what you're doing. So you're going to take your, take a bar spoon or a teaspoon, whatever you got. I need a fancy bar spoon. I do have one somewhere. I didn't get it out. Okay, I didn't add any, like, of these bitters or anything on this one, right? No, try it as it is. We actually tried a version with the herbal lavender bitters yesterday and just found that with the um, kombucha that we were using, it was a bit overpowering with the floral. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got lemon bitters here, which are quite nice as well, um, especially if you're going to be doing a little bit less of the citrus than the half ounce that we said. Um, but yeah, the, I found that the lavender with the hibiscus was a bit much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And easy peasy. Like, that's really just it. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Oh, that's really good. Right? The honey with the hibiscus. Especially mm -hmm. like on our on our end here, we're using our honey tea syrup. The honey bush with like it's just floral on floral and honey with floral is just I mean is perfect. So works really well. And then gin is tea's best friend. Do you ever do like a spiked iced tea? Gin. Mm. Like yeah. it's still really refreshing. You don't even really notice if you're drinking alcohol. Yeah. Right. But it is really nice with gin too. If you're looking for a little bit of a. Did you end up doing less lemon? No. Like it now. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, it's nice that everything's here. You just feel like you're making a little potion. I know, you right? just keep it's adding fun. stuff to it. And then exactly, and then that's the fun too, right? Like, so now you're curious about the bitters. So why don't you just put a few drops of the bitters on top and see what that does to your cocktail? Okay, these ones are lavender, and yeah. so the bitters. Um, do they expire differently than the syrups? Totally. Yeah, your syrups, your syrups. Um, I mean, at the moment, we don't have ours shelf stable yet. We keep ours in the fridge. Um, right. and we have a refrigerator. Um, for all of you fine folk who don't live in uh, the Okanagan and want to order something from us, uh, we do ship across the country. Um, uh, so they have a shelf life of about three to four weeks once they've been refrigerated. Um, by the end of this month, we're fingers crossed going to have our shelf stability down. Um, but bitters are um, shelf stable indefinitely. Um, indefinitely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the way that we make our bitters is the old school way. Um, it's a, made in a um, alcoholic solution. So um, alcohol is a solvent and um, we just put all of the citrus, all of the roots, botanicals that we want um, to flavor the bitters. We it's, it's an infusion. So we let it sit for So what you're left with, um, it's just a tincture of uh, overproof alcohol with all of the flavors in there. And so you said that the bitters don't have to be in the fridge. No, no, they're shelf stable. Shelf stable. Shelf stable. Okay. Use them within like five years, but they'll they'll last for. Delicious. So what's anyway. coming up for twenty twenty one for you guys? Are you guys doing anything exciting? Launching anything? Yeah. Oh, we're just going to take the year off. Mm. <laughs> 2021 yeah. was hectic, so we deserve a break. Yes, this is true. <laughs> um, yeah, like Shane was just saying, we're dialing in our shelf stability so that we can hopefully get ourselves into more retailers. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's difficult with our products not being able to be um, shelf stable. And uh, we do have a lot of fun things happening, but we can't really share any info Yet, yeah. we have to be following your Instagram to get all yes. the new things happening. Yes, totally. Hopefully, in the next um, in the next month or so, month or so, we ideas. should be able to share a little bit more information. But yeah, we're in, in. We're looking to expand the business, right? We're looking to get our operations dialed in, be able to you know manufacture more than what we've been doing out of our um, commissary kitchen. So it'll be nice to kind of have a bit more grounds. Yeah. Yeah. If, Y'all can read in between. And when you when you get it all going and you have your whole line of bitters, then I'll cook something with your bitters. We could do like a oh, that'd be so food fun. and cocktail collaboration or something. That'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be that. fun to do like a cocktail food pairing so that people can get all the products and all the food and make it at home and yeah, get a little cooking class and cocktail class. And then we'll make sure that we. Um, I, I know that you mentioned kind of when we touch base right before the the uh, live here that um, you were curious about some of the bar gear that you had. And so I imagine that, you know, for the next one that we do, yeah, we'll have to replace that and get you some. Apparently this is no good. Well, and I was telling Shane, the reason we were talking about it is that I said, I hope we don't need this because I don't know how to use it. It always gets stuck. I can't get them open again. Like they scare yeah. me. I don't want to use it. 
Yeah, that specific style. So a lot of kind of like how we've progressed the business where it is, is um, and why we use like dropper bottles versus the Woozy Dasher bottles is functionality as well as consistency and like ease of use. And um, though the shaker set that you've got there uh, has the strainer built into it, it's good in theory, but in actuality, it really doesn't work that well. That lid tends to get stuck on top and it's a pain in the butt. Um, and so, you know, as like, Kelowna, especially where we are, um, like bitters are really hard to get, um, bar gear, like extraordinary, extraordinarily hard to get. And so that's kind of what's pushed us to be more product focused. Um, and, you know, it started with like, whenever we had consulting clients, uh, we would always give them a, you know, a cheat sheet of where to get bar product and everything. We really just saw it as an opportunity. So we've actually started retailing um, all of our favorite bar gear. Um, and mm -hmm. so we sell amazing shaker sets. Strainers and bar spoons and you know. Not these, so I can get rid of this one officially, right? Yeah, yeah. we can kick that to the curb for sure. <laughs> yeah, we've got some really, really, really awesome stuff. And so we're really just trying to be that one-stop shop of cocktailing, um, especially in uh, the Okanagan here. But like we said, you know, we're shipping all across Canada, and um, yeah, it's been really cool. Yeah. So this is the shaker tin that you want to have the want to use. It's um, uh, part. You can put way more in it, and then it just. Well, so when you snap it together, there's um, a touch point at the bottom where it'll be flat. Here. Yeah. So oh, yeah. there's a lot of space up here, not a lot of space down here. And so you basically just want to hit it on the side where there's, um, where there's like connection and it pops open. Oh. So you don't have to like, you're not tugging at it and you're not like yeah. gonna like spill it all over yourself. Yeah. Um, so much better way to do it. Good. I'm sure there'll be a whole bunch of um, like YouTube's up on how to use all this stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a much better way than I just explained. <laughs> you just go on Google and, and look, up, look up Born to Shake. We'll put up a new video. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just going to Born to Shake for all my cocktail needs from now on. That's, that's just all there is to it. That's the hope and dream. Definitely. You know, we really end with our beautiful product, then we get you coming back for more, and then you realize that. Uh, you can get all the fancy bar gear that you need. And we've been trying to get um, like a price bracket as well. So like, yeah. this is our gunmetal um, version, but we also have stainless steel. So, you know, that's the um, grade less price wise. They both work yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah, we, again, you know, whatever your budget is, we're, we'll hopefully try to make it work for you. I like it. And I'm going to admit that I've had this for probably a year and never opened it because I didn't know what to do with it. So now, now I know. Now you know. And what, I'm what, so what, excited. And we go through, I make, I was telling you earlier, I, I rotate about seven gallons of kombucha in this house. So it's nice to have something new to do with the kombucha too, because I can only drink so much freaking <laughs> kombucha. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it's nice Definitely. to get more like options in, in our beverages and then just having like a nice cocktail. Totally. And it's tough and, you know, it's challenging too, because, you know, you want to do things um, that are going to be less sugary. Um, so then that really only leaves you with soda because, um, you know, tonic is going to have sugar in it as well, especially if you're getting like the mainstream generic stuff, which I would not recommend. There's a lot of beautiful craft tonics you can get. But if you are trying to, you know, reduce the amount of sugar in your drinks, you know, what, there's not really a lot of options. So, com you know, kombucha is a really fun way to do it. Um, and then you can just add even if you didn't want to use a syrup like what we did today, you know, just add bitters, add some citrus. You know, there's lots of lots of variables and things that you can do to have some fun and add flavor. I love it. Right. So I'm going to tell everybody who's not already following Born to Shake to make sure you go to follow them because all their new stuff's going to be coming out on your. Is Instagram your main kind of social media? Definitely. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, most of us like we Instagrams are probably most popular platform by far, um, growing, the Insta, growing the Facebook a bit, but we have a really beautiful website too um, that showcases all of our product, all of the kits, all of the um, bar tools. Um, we've got a recipe section up there too as well, um, which amalgamates all of the recipes from the cocktail kits that we've got and then also some fun stuff. Um, we, you know, try like everything. We built out a little holiday section too. Yeah. Um, for those of you that like eggnog, we showed you how to make eggnog um, without having to, you know, pre-batch a whole, you know, like 
carton of eggs and sugar and this, you know, we turn it into a flip. So it's, you know, we're, we're trying to, trying to grow it out and have some fun. And, um, you know, we try to encourage our followers to, um, message us privately and ask us about, you know, separate, uh, like fun recipes and, you know, which I sometimes do. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was I'm like, Shane, I'm having a party. Help. Shane, know, I'm right? doing this. Yeah. Help. <laughs> not surprised with how many messages we get about that. Yeah. Yeah. Or like someone bought them something and they're like, I have no idea what to do with this. Yeah. But that's also a really uh, another reason why we built out the recipe section on our website. So if somebody buys you or somebody buys you bitters and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Or like you, you have some of our product left over from a cocktail kit and you don't know what to do with it. Um, you can find some cool ideas. Like our the Miss Lavender syrup that you have is really nice as like a gin sour and you could use your uh, alternative gin and make a mm -hmm. beautiful cocktail out of it. Yeah. I love a sour. So I can make sours without alcohol. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> and then it's really fun in bubbles in bubbles too. Like the, the uh, Miss Lavender syrup makes a really nice uh, sparkling cocktail. There's really just so much stuff that you can do. I love it. Right. Um, we're going to get you guys back because we'll probably do like a spring cocktail and a summer cocktail and a fall cocktail. And a... Yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got our, uh, our hottest syrup to date was our blood orange syrup and we've been making yes. it right. Yeah, it was a good one. So, I went through that so fast. I think it was this size bottle too and it was just gone. Yeah. Well, fortunately for everybody, we've got larger bottles now. They're 11 <laughs> ounces, so it'll last you a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, we're going to be bringing blood orange back pretty quick. And we'll, we'll, we should do a margarita, a margarita session. I mean, Yay! I think it's, uh, I think it's due. It makes sense. It just makes sense. It just right? makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for having us. Tonight. It's evening. Well, tonight. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's, it'll be daytime at some point when someone wants <laughs> At some point. <laughs> I, haven't, I have barely been able to see you guys because I didn't have my glasses on. but Because then I get like the light ring on my glasses, so I had them off. Yeah. But you, I could kind of see your outlines this whole we, time. We have just two minutes ago realized that we can make you bigger, too. So, we so it was like this like big. Size. Yeah. And yeah. now. Oh. <laughs> now I'm really big. Cool. Yeah, we'll get it as we go. Exactly. Okay, thank you guys. I have to get up to turn yeah. it off, but thank so you. Fun. Okay, have, have a good one. one.